Hi, my name is Brandon, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a 2D project in Unity with the Universal Render Pipeline. With the Universal Render Pipeline package installed, this gives you access to features such as Shader Graph, which is an extremely useful feature when it comes to making custom shaders with minimal to no code. So let's go to the computer and I'll show you exactly how to set this up. Okay, folks, so now that we have our desktop here, first things first, we're gonna make sure that we have Unity Hub installed. If you don't have so already, I'll leave a link to the download in the description below. And once you have that installed, you'll wanna to come to this icon here. You'll double click it, it will open up this window. And you'll see here on the left, you have a couple different tabs here. You have projects, learn, community installs. The learn tab is definitely a good place to go and check out projects um, and learn how they made these projects and really helps um, teach you exactly how the game development process works in Unity. So definitely worth checking these out. They also come with tutorials as well. So definitely worth the checkout. Um, first things first, when creating a game, you're gonna wanna sure that you have a Unity version installed. Um, I'm using Unity version 2020.2.1 F1. So if you don't have a version of Unity installed, you'll want to come to add. It will pop up this window. You'll see the different versions of Unity that are available. Unity 2019 is the more stable one, but if you want the newer features that Unity has been releasing as time has passed, you'll want to click one of these 2020 ones. Any of these should be fine. Um, you'll definitely, I believe, want to pick 2019 or 2020. I'm not sure if URP is supported in the 2018 version. I could be mistaken, but definitely choose either 2019 or one of the 2020 versions. Once you've selected the Unity version that you want, you'll click Next. You'll come over here. You'll see a couple things here. You'll see DevTools. This is a code editor that's used to um, code scripts for Unity. And this is the best dev, dev tool to use because it's integrated with Unity and includes all the libraries that are needed and to have the Unity scripting features. So definitely make sure that you have this checked if you don't have this already. And then it will give you all the platforms that you can uh, build with. If you wanna make a game that's compatible with all of these, then just leave these all selected. Um, they do take up quite a bit of space, so just be aware of that. But um, then you'll click Next, follow the prompt, and get the install of Unity started. And you can pause the video now because this might take a while to do so. But once that's done, you'll come back over here to Projects. You'll see all the projects listed um, that you have on your machine. If there's a project that you downloaded that's not showing up here, the easiest way to do that is just click Add, find the project that you're trying to add, select the folder, um, click enter and it should pop up in your list of projects. That's just a little tip there, but we're going to want to create a new project. So what we're going to do here is click new. Now people's instinct is to click the universal render pipeline when trying to create a universal render pipeline project, but that's not necessarily the best um, scenario, especially for something 2D. Um, we actually want to select a 2D template because that will give us all the packages that are beneficial to a 2D platformer including things such as the tile package and stuff like that. So make sure to click the 2D and we'll just install the Universal Render package uh, manually. It makes it a lot easier. If you try to go to the Universal Render Pipeline template, you can sometimes get bugs or issues and even a black screen. I was getting the black screen when trying to convert it into a 2D project. So not too sure what was happening there, but I tried a whole bunch of different things and nothing would seem to work. So just click the 2D template for now. We'll install the universal render pipeline package manually. But um, okay, so we're gonna go over the project name here. We're gonna wanna name this 2D URP tutorial. Okay. And then make sure the location where you want your project save is selected. If you wanna change this, just click the three dots, select the place you wanna save it, click select folder, and it should change it to whatever location you want it saved. Once that's set up, click create. You'll get the uh, loading window here. Sorry, it's cut off from using an ultra wide monitor. I was trying to make sure the formatting of the video was right and you could make sure you could see and not so zoomed out. So uh, yeah, just bear with me. If you get any issues while this is loading, um, just quit out of it, try reopening the project again. Um, and if that doesn't work, maybe um, in, uninstall the Unity version that you downloaded and reinstall it. Sometimes you just might not get a clean version or a clean install of the Unity version, but you shouldn't have any issues. It might take a minute, especially upon initial project creation because it's uh, creating all the settings and folders for you. So 
Okay, so now that we got this pulled up, now what we're going to do is make sure that we have all of our panels here. So we have our scene game. This is just a basic template for game development. So you have your scene view, which is where you're gonna develop your game view, which is where you're gonna see what your game looks like um, when it comes to runtime. You also have your hierarchy, your project hierarchy here, which is gonna attain all of your um, game objects here. Then you have your inspector, which is gonna show all the different settings for anything that you click. So if I click here, it's gonna pop up with all my main camera transforms, the uh, camera properties here, and so on and so forth. And then you're gonna have your project hierarchy and your console tab. The console tab is useful, especially when seeing if there's any warnings or errors that are occurring in your project. So definitely make sure to have this. If you're missing any of these panels, you'll just come up here to window, panels, and then it should have all of the primary panels right here. So if you're missing any of them, just click this and it should pop right up and you can um, simply drag and drop wherever you want to put it. So, but okay. So now that we have our template set up here, we're gonna see that it's created an assets folder here for us. So first things first, we're gonna wanna create a universal render pipeline asset and renderer, but we can't do that upon initial uh, startup of this application because we don't have the universal render pipeline package installed. So how do we do that? We come up here to window, we come up here to package manager, we're gonna to wanna to go to Unity Registry. And we're gonna type in universal, and it should pop up. Yep, universal RP. This is the universal render pipeline package. So we'll come down to here to this button, click install. Again, this might take a, a little bit, but no worries. You should see a little window pop up here saying that it's, yeah, there we go, Unity Package Manager. It's importing all of the packages needed and folders, you can see the shader graph uh, files are being imported right now. Shader graph is by far the most useful tool in Universal RP because um, trying to make custom shaders through code can be quite difficult. The shader graphs gives you a visual representation of shaders, so it makes it um, easier for people who aren't very experienced in coding because staring at shader code is quite terrifying especially if you've never coded before. Okay, so once it's installed, you should see this remove button here. That means that it installed properly. You shouldn't have too many issues with that um, unless your internet connection cut out or something weird like that. But once that's done, you click X. Now we will have the universal render pip pipeline uh, installed on here. So now what we'll need to do is, like I said, create a universal render pipeline asset and forward renderer or render data, sorry. So to keep this nice and clean, we're gonna come over to our assets folder. We're gonna right click, create a folder. Let's just call this URP for right now, just for namesake. We're gonna double click inside the URP folder and we're gonna wanna right click again, create rendering universal render pipeline. And then you're gonna wanna select the pipeline asset. Now the pipeline asset is gonna create the pipeline asset and the forward renderer. So you'll see when I click this, um, we'll just keep it as that name. We click enter and now we get the pipeline asset and the pipeline asset renderer. But this is for 3D, this renderer right here. So we're working in 2D. We don't want the 3D renderer. So we're gonna go ahead, right click, come up here to delete, delete. Now we just have our universal render pipeline asset. You'll see that it has um, a blank spot for some render data. So we wanna create a 2D one. So we're gonna right click again, create, go back to the same place we were, rendering, universal render pipeline, click 2D render data. We'll just get rid of the, the new there. And then you see that it looks a little bit different from the other render data. This is for a 2D game right here. So we'll go back, make sure that you have this universal render pipeline asset selected. That way it shows up in your inspector. If you click on anything else, this inspector will disappear. So make sure you have this selected. And then in order to attach the render data to this spot right here, you can go either click on this little dot on the side here. It should pop up with 2D render data because we don't have any other render data available. So it should just be that alone. Or you could do it the fun way, which is what normal people do in my opinion, is just go to the render list, drag and drop right in there, and then it loads everything properly. 
Then the last step is just to put the pipeline asset into your project settings. Um, so we'll go to edit, go to project settings, make sure you have the graphics selected and you'll see a little spot for a render pipeline asset. Again, two ways you can um, attach it here. You either click the little dot, put double click the universe render pipeline asset or drag and drop. As you can see, the um, shaders were loaded and you don't need to press anything else. Everything should be set up properly. So you'll just click X. And now that that's all set up, um, we officially have the universe render pipeline done. Now we have access to shader graph now. So if we wanna create a shader real quick, we'll show you how to do that. So make sure the assets folder is clicked. We'll go ahead and create another folder. We're just gonna name this shaders. It's important to make sure that your um, project is nice and neat because sometimes it can get a little hectic, especially when you go into developing a larger game and as your game gets bigger. So definitely making sure that you stay organized is kind of important. Um, you go ahead and create again. Now you're gonna wanna make sure um, when you come to the shader tab here that you go to universal render pipeline. Um, these other shaders I do not believe are compatible with the shader graph. So make sure you come down to universal render pipeline and then go to lit shader graph. Lit shader graph, if you've seen in older tutorials, um, they have a shader called PBR graph. The lit shader graph is the PBR graph, just for, um, you know, to make sure that no one's confused on that. And that way you can also follow along with tutorials that may be older. So just a little tip there. So you wanna click lit shader graph. It's gonna create a uh, new shader for you. We'll just name it shader, because it doesn't really matter. We're not using it for anything. So you'll see that um, this compile and show code, it's already generated some code for shader graph for you. So you don't need to worry about that for right now unless there's something that's not available um, via the nodes here when I open up shader graph. So let's go ahead and double click. You'll see that you have two nodes here. So you have the vertex and fragment. Um, this has been split apart since the previous um, iterations of shader graph. So originally it used to just be one block and it used to be called the PBR graph. This is still the PBR graph. It's just named a little bit differently. And like I said, it's split apart into subsections. So um, no worries about following old tutorials. You should be able to follow along exactly the same way. Um, like I said, the naming may be slightly different. And um, also if you're concerned about missing um, fields here, alpha clip and alpha clip threshold, what you'll need to do is come over here to the graph inspector. Make sure you have graph settings clicked and then go over here to alpha clip, click that, and then you should have those two extra fields loaded up. Now, if this graph inspector isn't showing up for you, it might be because you don't have this selected up here. So if I click this, it disappears, click it back, shows back up. And same with the blackboard over here, which is where you store all of your reusable variables. If you click that, it'll disappear. Same with the main preview window. So if you're missing any of these windows, just make sure that they're um, selected up at the top here. So now that we have that all set up, if we wanna save anything, you can just click uh, save asset and the, whatever changes you made to the shader will load right up. So, but that's just a general basic understanding of setting up shader graph in 2D. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and end this video. I will go over more about how to use the shader graph in a upcoming video. So if you do enjoy the content that I'm providing to you guys, make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you can see when new videos are loaded. I'm gonna to try to be making up-to-date 2021 versions of Unity tutorials. So make sure to stay tuned if you're looking forward to becoming a game developer in 2021. So in that case, I will see you guys next time. Thanks.